We're late. Get the phone, mate. Let's, like, come the on, boom, we'll just explain the something. There's cameras, there's sound stuff, don't... Go I didn't... Re no, but I didn't... We're going towards Guys, the sun hour. Harry, Harry, the we're hour. late. Just hope we find the sun hour, because that boy's going to be upset if we do. <laughs> oh, I see. It's 3 o'clock GMT, this is The World Today from the BBC World Service with Roger Hearing and Julian Key. Now, you'll have to wait more than 100 years before you get another chance to see a transit of Venus. That's where the planet Venus passes in front of the sun's disk and shows up as a little round black ball. Well, someone who was so keen not to miss this transit and not have to wait till 2117 is Daniel Owen, an amateur astronomer who jumped to his car and drove 24 hours from London to southern Italy so that clouds and rain wouldn't spoil his view. We are on our way to a little place called Vies on the east coast of Italy. It's been a week of miserable, miserable, miserable cloud and rain. No chance to observe anything at all, let alone the sun. If it's cloudy, I'll be pretty gutted. We've tried everything. I've looked at so many different weather forecasting websites looking at places that are on the map which face east so that you get the sun rising. It was originally going to be the Alps. That then changed because there's huge thunderstorms all over south of France and going into the Alps. And then it was Poland. And then it was Poland. I was looking at Romania um, so that, you know, you get the maximum out of this event. Set up, yeah? Leave the poor boy alone. We are, I think we're in Germany. Uh, coming up to Stuttgart, um, but as you can see, look, there's there's a little patch of blue sky, which is the whole point of coming this far from England. <laughs> Venus is actually pretty much the same size as the Earth, um, and it's made of the same stuff. It's called the sister planet. Uh, I'm not going to crash, don't you worry. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's like Earth's twin. Um, well, I've never seen a transit, so, you know, this is this is the first time I would have seen anything like this. Yeah, well, I mean, this is a once-in-a-lifetime event. This is, this is never going to happen. I'm never going to see this again. Uh, in fact, nor are you. You're probably, what you'll see in a, in a small telescope, like mine, is a tiny little dot um, against the vast brightness of the sun. This is an eclipse of the sun, yeah. It's just an eclipse of the sun by a very small body, and uh, most people probably won't notice it. Right. You have reached your destination. I just gotta, I've got to have some sleep at some point, otherwise I don't be able to see anything. Yeah, I'm excited as an extremely knackered person can be, but no, I'm very excited. Been looking at the weather forecast, it's looking very good. and I'm just about to get my first look at... Oh my god, I can see it! Where's that, um, where's that living room? Hello again, this is The World Today from the BBC World Service. He jumped to his car and drove 24 hours from London to southern Italy so that clouds and rain wouldn't spoil his view. He joins us now. The big question, Daniel, uh, did you get some good weather? Did you actually see it? Oh, Lord, yes, I did. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. You know, a clear view to up to the eastern horizon just as it rose up and it was just, you know, glittering off the waves and it was, it was really beautiful. It was uh, quite magical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. I'm so pleased for you that you managed to see it because it would be a long, long way to drive just to find that the weather was as bad as it is in England. Aside from the rarity value, tell me what it is that intrigues you about these transits. It's a real kind of visual representation of this whole clockwork of planetary orbits. Um, whole way everything's in motion. 
you know, you look up at this guy and the stars don't seem to move. But actually, they're always, everything is, is constantly in rotation. And, and I just find it really exciting to, to actually have a chance to, to observe something which you see so directly. You know, OK, it took six hours for Venus to, to cross the sun. We only saw the last sort of hour and a half. You look back after a minute and think, oh, yeah, it's moved a tiny bit. And then, you know, it's moved a tiny bit more. Um, and, you know, you get this sense of this huge body because it's the size of the Earth. It's, it's like our twin planet, so they say. <laughs> well done, well done. I think you need to deserve a round of applause for a 24-hour <laughs> drive just to see a little black dot go across the sun. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much. Of course you can look at the most amazing pictures you can see online, and NASA have got, you know, probably hundreds of telescopes and cameras all pointing at the sun for that amazing little moment. But um, there's something, you know, very special about being able to just see it for yourself and know what you're looking at whilst you're seeing it. <laughs> yeah, this is right. Are you sure? Yeah, E31. It doesn't say A50 anymore. You no, don't e have to follow Yeah, but then it goes E31, doesn't it, Tom? For so blends, remember? Mannheim straight on, though. No, no, that's right. We